Prairie Gothic artwork can include irony, dark narratives or stories, and tragic loss within images of haunting memories, rural legends, and romantic dreams in pursuit of a better life. Artists Frank Sikansky and George Tozak depict memories of hardships on the prairies with narratives of the depression years and tragic loss of farmsteads being abandoned by desperate families, dead horses, an empty well, and endless dust storms. Frank Sikansky was born in Romania in 1900 and immigrated to Canada in 1926, settling in the Dirt Hills area south of Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. He moved to Regina, Saskatchewan in the mid-1930s and worked as a blacksmith until he joined the Canadian Army. When he returned to Regina after World War II, Sikansky worked in construction until he retired in 1967. He often worked with wood and made toys for his children, including his eldest son, internationally known sculptor Victor Sikansky. Frank's paintings focused on recreating scenes of pioneer life and the immigrant experience capturing the memories and hardships experienced by his family and neighbors. George Tozak's acrylic painting, Canada 1949, Racism in Alberta During the 40s, addresses the racism that immigrants experienced within prairie culture. Tozak was born in Gravelberg, Saskatchewan in 1934, where he grew up through the Dust Bowl years on his family's farm. He joined the Canadian Armed Forces and served for seven years with NATO, during which time he began painting. He served with the first United Nations Emergency Force in the Middle East, and in 1975 he was transferred to CFB Edmonton. Three years later, George left the Air Force to serve with the Alberta Justice Department until his retirement. A prolific, self-taught artist, George has painted over 2,000 works, first concentrating on abstract and landscape works. He has since returned to his roots, focusing on heritage or folk art. Indigenous prairie gothic themes speak to colonial trauma that intermingle with history, memory, and the everyday. Plains Cree artist Ruth Cuthands, drawing January Thaw, Edge of Town from 1990, counters everyday settler experiences as they complicate memorialization of schooling with an admixture of racism she experienced as a teacher. Cuthand grew up in Cardston, Alberta, near the Blood Reserve, where at an age of eight she met artist Gerald Tailfeathers and decided that she too wanted to be an artist. She went on to study fine arts at the University of Saskatchewan and the University of Montana. Sherry Farrell Reset's 1992 Haunting Riel's Vision of Death, 1885, combines text and imagery to reference Riel's dark dreams while offering contemporary commentary on Métis history. Of Métis ancestry and a member of the Temiskaming First Nation in Quebec, Sherry studied at the University of Manitoba in Winnipeg. As an artist, illustrator, curator, and educator, Sherry seeks to support Indigenous history and Indigenous women's histories. Alan Benjamin Clark's acrylic paintings respond to residential school experiences and to cultural trauma. Muscaday First Nation artist Alan Benjamin Clark was born in 1955 in Canwood, Saskatchewan, where he first discovered art in grade school. He is concerned with cultural dichotomies and often uses visual and literary puns in his art as a communication device. He has remarked that humor keeps you sane. This underlying humor, sometimes satirical in nature, helps him address difficult issues through his art, and the resulting symbolism is meant to be deciphered by each viewer individually. William Kirillek is known for his apocalyptic visions, memories of tragedy, and depictions of prairie isolation. To some viewers, his oil painting titled Faith of My Fathers, 1964, may reference the decay of a prairie home or one-room schoolhouse and the loss of prairie dreams. Kirillek was born in Alberta in 1927. After the family lost their grain farm during the Great Depression, they moved to a farm near Stonewall, Manitoba. The back of the farm bordered on a bog, now Oak Hammock Marsh. William was the oldest of seven children in a Ukrainian immigrant family. His prairie roots, 
relationship with his father, struggles with mental health issues, and conversion to Roman Catholicism informed his work throughout his highly prolific career, and he was based in Toronto as an artist. Strongly narrative in approach, Kirillek's works are often unsettling and unconventional. Ivan Eyre's oil painting Purple Fish offers unsettling atmospheres, chaotic environments, and a sense of foreboding in its prairie scenes, which includes surrealist and symbolist imagery. He was born in Tullymet, Saskatchewan in 1935. He took an early interest in art and studied fine arts at the University of Manitoba in Winnipeg, returning as a professor of painting and drawing from 1960 to 1993. Ivan's sculptures, paintings, and drawings depict imagined and mythical subjects that are often metaphors for psychological states. His large body of work, created over five decades, includes panoramic landscapes, portraits, and still lives, with complex compositions that echo cubism, surrealism, and expressionism. Heather Benning transformed an abandoned farmhouse southwest of Brandon along Highway 2 near Sinclair, Manitoba. The installation work becomes consumed by fire in her video. With the dollhouse's grand scale and natural location, Benning decontextualized this childhood toy, emphasizing a sense of loss and abandonment. Like childhood innocence that is lost, so too is this way of life and relationship with place on the family farm. Amelie Atkins presents viewers with a visually stunning prairie fable in her 16mm film which is screened as video, Scenes from a Secret World. There is a familiar feel to the video, perhaps reminding us of fairy tales we grew up with. There are archetypal story characters and allegorical elements, but as it unfolds it becomes unpredictable, like a dream sequence, and refuses to conform to story protocols. Amelie Atkins is a multidisciplinary artist based in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, whose blend of film, textiles, installations, performance, and photography melds fiction and the everyday. Chris Reed references folklore from her Ukrainian heritage and tales that she grew up with to make statements about contemporary social concerns. Several of her works are based on the Slavic character Baba Yaga, a sinister witch who eats children, and when she's not at home, her house walks around on chicken feet, suggesting the tenuous nature of our homes, both psychologically and literally. Chris Reed is a multidisciplinary artist based in Brandon, Manitoba. She was born into a family of Ukrainian roots and grew up in the Ukrainian town of Lamont, Alberta. Chris's work is part biographical and part fantastical, with a visual narrative about anxiety, uncertainty, and coping that is charged by the stories and symbols from her Ukrainian upbringing. Her art practice is also inspired by her livelihood as a housing resource worker for the Brandon Regional Health Authority. Learn more about the other themes in the exhibition in the rest of the AGSM Art Connects video series, which brings you up close and personal to works of art as you meet artists from the prairies.